I was, I was also leading BLM, and <sighs> to my chagrin, I heard the representatives of BLM ask for help in handling the problems of removing homeless people from the area in which they are set to do environmental restoration. And not a single person at the table was able to offer any promise of help. And I would ask you to remember this as you work things out in your work session on Wednesday. Please remember that at least 100 people are going to be displaced. 20 or 30 right in the main parcel and more will be displaced starting tomorrow and ending the 29th is the period where they will be beginning to move people out. The 29th begins the closure. There is no place for these people to go. I heard Norman from Whitebird speak very poignantly about being called to watch people die. <coughs> because there are no resources being made available. There is a woman who is camped out there who works at a local ser social service agency and has for several years and has lived in the same place. She cannot afford a place to live, and yet she continues to work to serve those who are less well off than she is. Another woman who worked for 17 years as a bus driver but she failed the blood pressure check on her physical, and she was let go. And she has no resources to re-up her education to get a better job, if there were one, for someone in her early 50s. There is no place. And if we cannot find one of our dozens of empty buildings to house people like this, then how dare we call ourselves a human rights city? <coughs> this is only the beginning of a wave. And if we cannot even begin to prepare, we will have to harden our hearts. And we will have to watch people die. It's already beginning. I'm sorry to be so harsh. But we have to work on this now. We can't dally 